Okay, good morning or afternoon, <laughs> considering whenever you're watching this video. I think uh, this is for Mr. Vaughn, and I told him that I would putz around with this and see what could be done. Uh, I guess it would be useful, <clears throat> let me pull over from my other monitor, the uh, elevations that he uh, posted. You know, it's supposed to be a gable here, perpendicular to this gable, and then another gable. And let's see. Yeah, so this, this would be a salt box kind of a gable here, and then a symmetric gable. And that's the other end. Anyway. That's what it should look like, and this is kind of what it does look like. Put that back on my second monitor. <clears throat> Let me click on this screen and hit F6, the F6 key. There it is. Well, it's a little bit too much. Where's the zoom tools? There they are. So, we've got some separations and so forth that are kind of this, this end looks all right, except for, I noticed, there's a secondary pitch here. I'm going to run that down. There shouldn't be a, one pitch and then another pitch, based on the uh, elevations. And, of course, this is unwanted. There's supposed to be a gable here. And this is supposed to be a, a, a salt box gable, and it's almost there. It's just there's some settings slightly off. <coughs> so... I'm going to go back over to this screen. You can, you get, I got to this uh, dual screen thing by hitting F6. I had an uh, overview open and a plan view open. Shift F6 tiles the screens of however many you have. Now, if you have four screens open, it'll tile all four of them, but I just wanted two. So, I got two. <clears throat> now, to business. Like this wall here should be program to have to be a gable right now it's not and I'm on the second floor over here second floor so that's this wall here so let's just open that up and uh, see what it says under the roof tab yeah I didn't think so let's click that and see what happens I don't know if auto roofs is on okay auto roofs is on <laughs> obviously uh, roof tools. Well, I just want to check that. Build roof. Yeah, auto roofs is on. And uh, pitch is 12, I mean 8. I'm not quite sure. I don't think the, in your elevations that the roof pitch is 8. And the, the software can't read your mind, so... Well, these are images. I can't zoom in on them and see what that says. But I bet it doesn't say 812. <laughs> it looks more like 512. At a glance, I'd say that's 512, not 812. And, of course, that's going to be um, important in figuring this out is that, that you get... See, there's the pitch indicator in the elevation, and there's one there. And, uh, yeah, there's a pitch indicator. There, too small for me to read in the uh, in these images, but you can probably read them. And uh, so, uh, not knowing what they are, I'm going to guess that they're that you didn't set them correctly in the uh, software. So, let's just I'm just guessing. I'm going to reset this to five. We've still got auto rebuild roofs on, and of course those will rebuild at five. Well, that looks kind of low. Now that I look at it, let's look at take a look at it. I don't care what these uh, error messages are. I'm going to check on, don't show me that again. Uh, error messages are mainly for the developers of the software and not for uh, us poor schmucks that use it. <clears throat> okay. You can write that down if you want, but by the same token, I wouldn't bother. That's just my, my opinionatedness. Well, that's salt boxing. There's probably two pitches in this wall here in the front. Let me just open that up and, and take a look, because I can, a rough tab. No, I was expecting to see this upper pitch, lower pitch thing checked, but it just says full gable, and that's what it's supposed to say. And then, 
I wonder where that second pitch is coming from. I'll have to, have to do some more checking. Let's check this wall. That's correct. This one should be set to full gable. Well, and it is. I can see that separation there coming. Let me zoom in so you really know what I'm... Well, let me close this. In order to zoom, I have to close that. Click on this screen. There's something funny going on right there. You can see there's... Well, they're the same pitch, but there's some sort of separation going on. There's two roof planes here, and they don't align. Um, I guess I should start back with basics. Uh, you didn't tell me what the ceiling heights per floor should be, so I'm going to just see what you have them set to. That's under Edit Default Settings, Floor. And they're set to the out-of-the-box default of uh, nine, 9 feet, or essentially 9 feet. <coughs> I'm not going to change that after the fact. I'm going to assume that you intended 9 feet for the first floor. We'll go to the second floor and check the defaults here. You have to go to the fl X actual floor and then go back to Edit Default Settings, Floor. And then you'll get them for the second floor. So you got both floors at 9 feet. I mean, essentially, 9 feet uh, 108 inches. Well, that's fairly close. So I'm assuming that that was intentional on your part because I can't assume otherwise. You understand? Now I'm going to check these and make sure that they're following the defaults. They are not. For some reason, you uncheck, uncheck the defaults. Okay. I'm just... Actually, I should zoom back so you can... All the, each of these changes is going to affect the roof with auto, auto roofs on. Uh, yeah, that, that's the one I want. It's already, some changes are already coming, are already occurring. Now I'm just guessing here, but uh, if it's supposed to, if you, if you have the default set correctly, then you need to leave this alone until the roofs are built. You can change these after the roofs are built and you turn auto roofs off, but uh, as long as we're building roofs, you need to leave these defaults alone. Unless there's a reason to do so. Okay, all of these have been altered by you. Now, the software didn't do this, by the way. <laughs> Maybe you didn't mean to. I'm going to go over here and see. I, I don't remember if uh, Designer Suite has this command or not. It doesn't. In some of the other titles in Premiere, there's a reset to default. So we'll just have to do it dialog box by dialog box. Okay. So we'll just check default. And the ceiling height. The ceiling height controls the roofs. Every change, and, and if you want uniform results and you uh, follow your defaults, unless there's a reason to diverge from the following the defaults, you can see there's not much change here. The biggest change is that when I made this a gable, then it's a gable. This doesn't line up with this yet, and that's probably because of ceiling height settings and, and stuff like that. Let me back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. But it's coming along. We have a, a peak here now. We just, this just doesn't line up. I'm going to keep checking these dialog boxes. Okay. And then just see how that affects the outcome. Okay. I think there's another dialog box here. Yeah, all of these have been altered for some reason from the default. And ideally, you want to operate from the defaults, and if provided the defaults are properly set. If they're not properly set, well, then you're probably not going to get much done. Okay, I think that's, I finally got the room dialog box structure. Oh, yeah, there it is. They've all, all of these have been altered. I guess you were in your trying to get this to work. And an open below room. This should be an open below. Yeah, okay, good. 
Now these figures are going to be different because it's measuring not from a floor platform but from the ceiling below so it's going to be default for an open below room anyway. I think these are all checked now they're all back on default. <clears throat> that seemed to throw throw that all into a tizzy. Let me check it again. Finished ceiling. What was it? I'm going to hit Control Z because it looked like the roof was actually working better before I fiddled with that. See, I, I'm just going by the results. Let me check this again. Okay. Still reading the old figures. I'm going to hit Control Z again. There we go. That's back where it was. Now, I'm, I'm no, you know, paragon of perfection with the software, but I can't observe an effect. And that was me changing this to default for that space was a bad idea. So I, went, I reverted. I don't think there's a dialog box there. That's just an auto-generated uh, wall there. You can tell if it's auto-generated by opening its dialog box, and it'll have no room to find and no locate check. <coughs> OK. Well, it's looking somewhat better, but it's, we've still got a ways to go. It looks like, let's spin around here. Yeah, this is looking correct. This is looking correct. Of course, this is not correct. That seems to be the major thing. Yeah, it looks, the rear elevation looks right. So everything's pretty much fixed. Well, we've got a little bit of an, an issue here and one here, obviously. And uh, we've got an unnecessary rough plane here. Let's go down to the first floor and take a look at that. <coughs> yeah, got an unnecessary. Yeah, this this rough plane here is going way the heck up here. Let's see, does Sweet have a vector view camera? I don't remember. No, it is glass house. Well, that shows it a little bit better. This this uh, gable plane is going up here, and then see if I was in Pro or in in Chief or uh, Chief Premier, I would just manually pull this this roof plane here all the way down and wrap it around here and delete that and blah blah blah. In Suite, you can't do that. You have to work with settings and so forth. So we got a little figure figure to over here. Because this roof plane here is coming down here, and it should meet here, and it's not. It's stopping short. And uh, we got something going on here. I think I'll just leave that glass house camera on because it shows the lines. we got an incipient kind of a thing going here on the second floor. Yeah, I see that extra plane there. That's probably coming from a dialog box that's off. I about probably didn't check and should have checked the dialog box in this closet. That's probably what's causing that separation there for that little plane there. <clears throat> that one's set to default. So I bet the closet is not, and that's what the problem is. It's a tab key. There we go. Bingo, bingo. It's always settings. That should smooth that roof plane there out, and it did. You see how that this being different from this caused that. And there's always a direct connection. So these roofs are being generated by the second floor. These roofs, uh, when I say these, um, you can't see my cursor very well. Click over here. Yeah, there we go. These roof planes are being generated from the first floor. And so if I wanted this, these upper roofs to line with the ones below, then I've either got to lower the ceiling heights of the second floor, or I've got to raise the ceiling heights of the first floor that that are generating these roof planes. So in, in suite, I don't have any other choice. It looks like to me it's off about six inches, about a rap, raptor, raptor depth. So 
see. That's about, well, it's about seven and a quarter inches. So it's around six, seven inches off. So I'm going to go down over here on the plan view side to the first floor <coughs> and open the garage di dialog box. I guess I'll zoom back a little bit more here. You can see the ceiling height on the garage is from this glass house is uh, rather high anyway. Let's just take a look and see what it's set in the garage dialog box. Yeah, you got it set really high. If I was to put it on the default, there'd be even more. Well, let's just do it. You'll see this roof jump down even more. Well, okay, it didn't jump down. It actually got better, I think, when I set it to default. Uh, well, better. It smoothed out some. Now, let's take this and uh, looks like to me it needs to come up about a foot. I'll look at, okay. Where's the floor? Oh, floor is, I wonder why that's set to minus 24 by default and grade. And if it's, if it's grayed out, it's set at some default. Well, I need to I need to find that out because that's that's screwy. <clears throat> we'll go to edit default settings again. Floor. Why is it doing that? See, it should be zero, not minus twenty four. Maybe I misread it. I would swear that that dialog box said minus twenty four. Maybe I was reading the wrong entry. Floor D. Four D minus twenty-four. Stem wall ceiling. Let's see what that change change does. Okay, that actually made it worse. It raised this side and lowered the other. Okay. I'm just having to feel my way with this. I didn't some, on some of these videos, I work out the solution beforehand. You're actually seeing how I, how I operate. Okay. And I, the value I changed was here. That actually screwed it up. It looked better at about 97 and an eighth. It looks smoother. Of course, it's too low. But see, it smoothed this roof, that roof plane out. <clears throat> Let's open that back up. I see. Let's change this to 109 and an eighth. One. I'm just trying to get the roofs to work. I don't know what the ceiling height is in your in your garage actually. Let's see, stem wall, floor finish, floor. I don't see anything amiss here. Just the results are amiss. <coughs> Let's set it to 121. We're just putzing around here, seeing what effect, what things cause. Okay, that's a little bit too much. <laughs> a little bit. So, oh, I just dawned on me. I need to check this wall here. I bet it's... Yeah, hi, oh, okay. <laughs> that's the wrong setting. That should be full gable, perhaps. Let's see what that does. Didn't do it. Didn't do a thing. <coughs> Let's see if this wall has been messed with. No, that's the way it should be. No settings in it at all. You must have used the gable line tool to get a gable over it, because there is a gable there. I wonder where that gable's coming from. Did you put it in this wall? No. Why don't you get a gable there? Because there is a gable in the front of the garage, but there's 
that order is not coming from this wall. I don't know if Sweet has a gable line tool, but perhaps it does. Let me look under uh, build roof. No, there's no gable line tool in Sweet. How'd you do that? <laughs> Interesting. So this ought to, this wall here ought to be uh, actually programmed full gable. Not quite sure how the, where this gable came from since it, there's nothing there to tell it to have a gable over it. <coughs> okay, I'm going to go back to the, the ceiling height changes. That was 120. That was too much. Let's go uh, 118. See what that does. I'm just messing around, see, making some changes. See, okay, that moved in the right direction. I'm going to whack off another two inches to 16. So you make a change, view the results. Okay, that's nice and straight along there, <clears throat> but we still got some separation over here. Uh, so where's the two? There it is. And it's probably coming from the rest of the, the house here. Uh, it may not be correct for your house, but I'm going to do the same thing over here because these roofs need to come up and, and blend with this one above. And since I don't have exact data from you and, and the images you posted are too small for me to read the data in them or scale them, I'm just going to I'm gonna, just gonna have to guess. So I got this at 116. That worked pretty good. I'm going to set this porch the same. Ceiling. 116. That's going to raise this fascia top yeah, up here. I didn't really smooth it out enough. We still got, uh, you can, well, you can see there's still separation in here. I'm going to raise that some more. And that's why uh, Home Designer Pro costs more money because I could just uh, skip all of this nonsense and just fix the roofs. And that's ob that obviously created a, a situation I don't need or want. Ceiling, what is it? One, yeah. Drop that back down an inch. I want to get that separation back in there. There we go. <coughs> It may be that Sweet can't can do this roof. It might be. Because I've still got I've still got crap going on over here. I got stuff, you know, this to fix. And obviously I doubt that the you know the, this garage is this tall. Um I can go back over here to your images. You can see the garage floor is lower than the front porch. That's obvious. And, um, yeah, maybe that isn't 512. But I don't think it's 812. Oops. Yeah, it's it, from without the scaling on this, it's a little bit, I'm just have, having a guess. But, uh, oh, yeah, see, there's figures over here that say the ceiling heights and floor platform thickness. All that's quite pertinent to what uh, I'm working on, but I can't read it. But these share the same height, and they look a little bit high relative to the ceiling. So, yeah, your model's not that far off. I think I'm just going to fix this. <laughs> I think it's, you know, but I think you, you from this video you can see what it would take in suite. You're going to have to tweak the ceiling heights until uh, you match. Uh, see, I got it to work over here. I'm not quite sure why that same setting. And when I changed this, then it goobered up the roof again. 
how <clears throat> I'm just I'm just going to I'm just going to fix this file and send it back to you. <laughs> I'm not going to save it. Hang on while I uh, open up something else. Uh, so yeah, I want Chief X4. I'm sorry. This turned out to be a little bit too much fun. <laughs> the only thing bad about me fixing this in Chief or somebody fixing it in Pro is that if you rebuild roofs once you get it back, then all the work's undone. You may want to change your mind and, and change some things, and then you won't be able to. But I kind of convinced myself that this is uh let's see, I want plans. I think I put that in uh, Sweet 2012. Yeah, there you are. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to, in Chief Premier, I can put this check, check here, and then you can continue to edit this when, I, when you get it back. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to. But this is turning out to be more trouble than I bought in for originally. Now, first thing I'm going to do is turn off auto roofs in the uh, build roof dialog. Now I'm just going to fix this. And my apologies, but uh, <clears throat> I thought this is going to be a, a bit easier. Oh, I don't want that backdrop. It's distracting. I'm going to turn off the backdrop. We don't need no stinking back backdrop. Okay. All right. So basically, what I was told you, what I was threatening to do is I'm just going to delete that roof plane. Uh, I'm going to delete that. Well, I'm going to pull it down out of there. See what I was talking about in terms of just grabbing the roof planes and making and doing what you want to do. See that roof plane goes way the heck up there. That's goofy. Let me go back to plan view. That doesn't have any business being up there. See I'm just grabbing these corners of this polyline, which is what the roof plane is. Make it into a little bit simpler shape. Well, let me do it in 3D so you can see what what I'm doing. In plan view, you're probably going, what is he doing? This is what I'm doing. These corners of the roof plane, I'm just getting rid of them by grabbing a corner, left-click drag to another corner, and simplifying the shape. Drag that down there. Okay. I'm going to go back to plan. I'm going to straighten this one out. It's kind of hard to do in a camera view. Well, that, that came out pretty good. This comes down like that. I'm going to wrap it around this gable. Yeah, this edge will connect, that's the join roofs tool, to that edge. I don't care that it's sticking down there. I'll just go down there and fix it. I'm going to do this in plan view. See, here's this uh, edge there. I need the upper roof plane, too. I can't see it. I'm going to tell this one. All this you can't do in suite. I'm sorry. That's why. Pro and, and Cheap Architect Premier cost more money because you get to do this kind of stuff. I'm going to send that roof plane down in plan view so I can see it in plan view. There we go. And I want this one to line up with that one. So I'm going to use the break line tool. All of this is not germane to suite, and I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I have only have so many years on this, on this earth. <laughs> I don't have time to to uh, mollycoddle your model like perhaps I ought to. I'm going to see about joining this edge to this edge. It's going to join there somewhere sometime. Okay, like that. We'll go back to the... Uh, I guess I could leave both of these camera views open. Yeah. I'll hit Shift F6. Yeah, there we go. Now you can kind of watch it in 3D or plan view as, as you choose. I've been using this long enough where I don't have to use a camera view, but I think it's instructive. So this is this roof plane here I just selected in 
you can see it's kind of a triangle and I, it needs to wrap around on this side. So I'm going to use the break tool. Break it up here. Which will create another line segment. I can drag that over there. You can see it begin to come down this way. Yeah, I like that. And probably looks like magic to you or something like that, but I, it's no big deal to me because it's, I do this every day. This little line here connects to, uh, or should connect to create a, a ridge, or a valley, excuse me, wrong nomenclature. Okay, this little error message here, I don't, I don't care what it says. I, I know what it says. It's not germane to what I'm doing. But you want to work in a uh, methodical in a methodical way. Uh, in some cases, it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Or I just started from this this area here, and I'm working from from uh, left to right. You can see how this roof plane is going down into the porch. This is all just transitory. Well, I'm, I'm getting this. You now I wanted it to line with, with this this roof plane here, so that's angled there. That is. All this means is I've got some more editing to do. Like this line here, probably going to break along in there somewhere. And then this little triangle down here, I'm going to pick it up. Uh, whenever you get this, well, of course, you won't see this dialog box in Sweep because it doesn't exist in Sweep. But for you pro users, whenever you see this, my advice is to check here. Don't show me again. Show again during the session and no thank you. Uh, when you're new to this software, you assume that the, the software has some intelligence. It doesn't. Uh, if I was to use this tool right now, it would just screw things up. So just skip it. You pro users. Okay, that cleaned that up a little bit. <clears throat> so, you know, this roof plane stops there. That's probably correct. This one here is going to ridge with that one. I mean, or valley with it right about there. So I need to set that up, the geometry of that. Come on, zoom in. Okay, so there's that. I'm having a little trouble with my mouse. There's that, that same roof plane there comes down into a point right there. Here's this one here coming up. Now obviously the uh, overhangs too too deep. I'm going to fix that. They, well I'm going to I assume that's correct. It's just more editing I've got to do. <clears throat> All right now this this edge here of this uh, plane here is going to tie into the uh, adjacent to this one, so I might as well get that editing done. That edge goes to that edge. And it's going to create a hole up, up roof here, so you, you saw it form up. And that's just because differing uh, pitches of roofs are coming together. I'm going to put a break right about there. I keep selecting that car. I'm just going to delete the car. It's, in, it's a nuisance. You can put it back later. Okay, that didn't solve it. Whenever, uh, oh, okay. I see what now why. See, it follows this angle to right this point. I need a break there. No, it didn't break. All right. Sometimes you <clears throat> use a break tool or some other tool and it should work and it just didn't work. Okay, that worked that time. Now, see it follows this angle to this point and then I broke it so that it can connect to this angle. Join those two and they should join now. Okay. It joined but it put that stupid triangle back. So. I'm going to break off that angle right about there. You 
It may be that the uh, porch roof is too low or, the, or this garage roof is too high. That's why I'm having this trouble. But you, you just you just feel your way. Okay. So geometry's not quite working out on that. So I think I need a flat spot for these uh, two roofs to join. So where's the brake tool? There we go. Put a brake over there. Because this angle uh, above here is good. In other words, this angle here. Jerk that down. It's probably going to join there, but what I've been missing is uh, I need to create a, another line here. We'll break that one and make it flat so it can join with a portion of this roof below. <coughs> this one. I'm going to use a brake tool, so break around this edge here. Now I see it's going to wrap around that corner. This corner, well, that's not showing up. This corner right here is what I just wrapped around with. See, I need to get that just outside the wall, otherwise it'll cut it off. That's enough, yeah. Now this flat that I created should join to this flat. This flat line and that flat line creating a, a valley. Okay, whenever you get this uh, message here, your pro users, uh, it, it just means that my uh, the geometry that I laid out wasn't wasn't correct yet and the software is telling me that uh, it can't carry out the command I just gave it so I'm going to turn this off but you'll see this in pro nowhere else oh I see it went way up roof okay see it went up here to this break point so I think I just need to do that okay that's beginning to form up Yeah, that's fitting together nicely. I know on the plan view side, it probably looks like a Chinese puzzle. And for new users, I'm sure it is. Now, I want to get this, this part of the roof plane out of this line here, this line here, at least up to a point. I'm going to snap that over there to the roof plane below. You'll see the uh, effect that creates. A tiny little bit right here. <clears throat> All right. I think I'll just uh, put. In, whoops! And move the whole thing. Just snap this over here. And move this back to what's perpendicular. Okay, that's looking better. See, I wanted to not chop this here. Well, this is turning into a job. I'm going to take this roof plane now and uh, put it up on the second floor because the rest of the roof planes are up on the second floor and go to the second floor plan view and continue on. This is this roof plane that I was just working on. And uh, <coughs> you can see in this uh, elevation that you posted on the rear, that's all one roof plane on the back. And on the front, that's one roof plane. This is the second roof plane. So just to refresh your memory, that's that's what I'm working on. So <clears throat> so this one here, yeah, that's one roof plane, and only a, there's a 90 degree angle here, and it doesn't go up there like it is doing. And this one kind of stops there. Okay. All right. See, that's that one there. Okay, well, that one's garbage. I don't need that one. Let's delete it. It's extra baggage. Okay. I think I'm going to keep this roof plane and the rest of them that are across here like that one. I'm going to delete it because it was just creating some problems. Yeah, okay. 
So basically, I'm going to take this roof plane and wrap it over to a right right here. And yeah, <clears throat> so take this and just pull it all the way through. And what the heck is that? Oh, okay, I'm going to get rid of that. This is going to be flat like that. And it should come over to about there. All right. Now this edge here, I want to parallel perpendicular to this wall. There we go. That comes over there. I'll worry about the overhang later. Not quite sure why. Oh, I, I know what I'm looking at. That's this roof plane here is going up too high. Yeah. It's that white white thing there is this roof plane going way up there where it doesn't belong. So I'm going to get rid of those edges. I just, I'm just left click dragging, by the way. And I clean that up. <coughs> now these, I'm going to fix these gables, these front facing gables. Zoom in a little bit. And it's like I've been doing, I'm going to, uh, what is that? I'm going to get rid of that. Whatever it is, I don't want it. Okay. I'm going to take this and put some brakes in it. And another one over here. And another one. I need about two more, I think. This is, I'm just break, taking a single line and breaking it into smaller segments. That's what the break line tool is for and what it does. <clears throat> That's so that I can grab these little diamond-shaped things and do that. So we want a, a pyramid there, we want a flat here, and we want a pyramid over here, basically, to tie into these uh, gable planes here. Now, I've got some extra geometry suited up that's coming down rectangularly, and I don't think it's going to come down in a rectangle. Well, maybe some. I'll leave that there. I'm going to use the Join Roofs tool to join this edge to this edge. Left click. Yeah. And on the other side, left click, and left click on what I wanted to join to. That's working. Okay. See, when the geometry is correct in the, the layout of your roof planes, and they just pop, pop, pop together, and otherwise you'll get an error message saying that it can't, couldn't carry out the command I just gave it. I mentioned that earlier. So it just means that you either have uh, you haven't set it up properly. The software is not real bright, and it needs it requires help. Okay, that doesn't look real great. Now why is that? Okay, it may be that I need to. Uh, yeah, it looks like to me. That's messed up. Let me look at the elevation here. Okay, those faces match here. I think that's what the problem is. Yeah, see the space here is up too high? Well, let me see what the fascia top is here. I'm going to open the dial. I'm sorry, you, don't, you can't do this in Sweet, but you can do it in Pro. The fascia top's uh, 215 and 1116, so I'm going to copy that value. I'm going to take this roof plane and open it. The dicey part here is, okay, it says it's the same, the same, but obviously it's not. That's because of these ends. Ends of the roof plane are down here, and I, I'm, I want to read this one, so I guess I'm going to have to just go up here and, and match it. So that the, yeah, so these things line up. I need to find out a true data, the true data about how high this is. I'm just using the cursor to line this, these, these edges up, so now it should read. See, 
you know, it's quite a bit too high. So I'm going to lock the pitch and uh, copy paste that fascia top value in, which will lower it considerably down so that it matches these gable planes. Bingo, like that. Now I'm going to reattach the edges. This just looks more like the, uh, see, you can see now why precise data will give you precise results. I, I'm guessing and I'm looking at the pictures that I, I can't scale <laughs> and so on and so forth. So it's, what I'm doing is kind of guesswork. Okay, I just reattach that gable edge. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I told you I was having a little trouble with my mouse. It sticks sometimes. It's a trackball, and they no longer make the trackballs, and it's getting old and wearing out, but it's, I'm used to it. So I'm just, I continue to put up with it. Okay, that's smoothing out. Go back to this screen. Yeah, it's beginning to look better. Okay, I'm going to take the kink out of this, this edge here. I might want to leave that. I think I'll leave that a little, a little straight here because I think that's probably how it is. We'll see. When I join the roofs, that'll tell me the, that'll be the acid test, so to speak. Yeah, I was correct. <coughs> now this edge here is out of parallel. Let me parallel that up. It didn't, par it didn't, it didn't comply with the command I gave it, so I'm going to do it again. Okay, straightened that time. I just want these edges to match, so we'll snap them together. Okay, we don't need any, there wouldn't be any uh, gutter on, on the second floor like this. I'm going to turn that off, it's goofy. And there wouldn't be any gutter here. Might as well just get, I'm going to shift select those three, or these four, and turn the gutter off. It's just unnecessary. Okay, so the, that part of the roof's pretty good, um, except the ridge doesn't match because I moved one of the roof planes. So we'll click on that one and use the join roof tool on this one. Now I think in the elevation, that that's kind of a, well, let's see. Well, this is taking a lot longer than I thought, and I'm sorry, but things just kind of require what they require. Oops. Lost the whole thing. Where is it? Uh, yeah, that's the one I want. Yeah, we have a salt box here, but that's equal, and this is equal. That looks right. That looks right, but this looks wrong in the model. See? So, uh, what is the fascia top in that? It's uh, 115, 11 sixteenths. I can just tell at a glance that this is all symmetrically off. So, I'm going to lock the pitch, copy paste that value so that they match up, and that'll match your, uh, yeah. In other words, this is the same height as this. You understand? I hope you do. And, you know, one thing always affects another. We'll have to join that up. Whoops. Wrong. Clicked on the wrong icon. That'll re-ridge that. Now we have symmetry on this end. And then we'll rejoin that over there. And there's some kind of little BS there. Now hopefully the windows aren't clear. Okay, that's, no, it doesn't look too bad. This window here is obviously too high. Or my roofs are too low, you know. I don't know. I don't have precise data to work from. But yeah, 102, yeah, that's ridiculous. Let's try it at 90. Let's try it at 84. 84 is the header height or floor to top. In a nine-foot ceiling, uh, uh, that would be about right. But again, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't have precise data, so I'm, I have to make guesses. 
All right, let's take a look and see what's going on with this little gadget right there. It's probably, yeah, there it is, Sam. Yeah, we just need to get rid of that. I think that's all there is to that. I don't remember what the overhangs, but, well, 18, that's all right. Okay, this is beginning to look a little bit more like your elevations. That looks like the rear elevation. This is, is uh, has equal sides because the face, the pitches are the same and the fascia top heights are the same. That's looking pretty good. Got a little issue here. And there's the salt box and there's the equal. Okay. I noticed the uh, attic walls. You know why this attic wall is coming in different from this? That's because it's, the defaults aren't set properly. This is a shale siding you've got on most of the stuff. If we go over here to edit, default settings, materials, edit, walls, exterior. See, it's set to that tan stuff. That's the reason that's that's there because it's the software follows its default settings and if you don't set the defaults, then it, you know, you wonder why this stupid software is doing A, B, and C, but it's because you haven't taken control of it, that's all. We'll go to plan material and find uh, shale. There we go. Shale siding. Okay, okay, okay. And sometimes those, uh, let me hit F12, see if that didn't straighten up. No, I'll just, I'll just do this. Any, any new attic walls that I build would now be the shale because the default set to the shale siding. Now I'm going to clean that up. Okay, here's this goobery up, goobered up edge here. It's just not, it needs to be, uh, I mean, yeah, it needs to be uh, paralleled up using a parallel perpendicular tool. I'm sorry, a lot of this you just can't do in Sweet. <laughs> That's kind of like dirty pool, but I, I gave it a good shot, a good college try, so to speak, in sweet, and I could tell that I was going to get nowhere pretty fast. So forgive me for being a coward, but I'm doing this for free, okay? <laughs> you get what you pay for. Excuse me the bad humor, but I think it's apropos. Okay, it's beginning to clean up a little bit. The only thing it's uh, off, now we, I've got this camera line coming in here, so it's, uh, let's see if I can select that roof edge, there we go, we've got a little bit of a flat in there, I'm just going to get rid of that, and line this edge up with the edge above, like that, and then reattach the edges here, they, they probably got, did, they probably got tangled a little bit. When I did that manual editing, yeah, okay, that straightened that up a little bit. Okay, so that's clean now. That looks pretty much like your, based on my best guess, it certainly looks more like your uh, elevations. It looks like it. I'm, I'm sure it's not, this is not accurate, you understand? But it's a lot closer than where you were. And, uh, okay, there's a little bit of a, uh, stuff that we could fix here like I think in the elevation this one yeah see all the spatial lines all straight across here so I've got a little bit to do there because you can see here that they, it's not straight <laughs> so we'll find out what the fascia top is here because that's about right, 111 and 1516, so I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I think that's, yeah, they match here, so I'm just going to start here and make everything match along. I'm going to grab that and grab that, shift selecting, and uh, lock the pitch and just change the, uh, 
fascia top value, which will make the fascia tops align. Top of the fascia, top of the fascia, top of the fascia. <coughs> now I have to do the same thing all the way around because all these roof, roof planes are connected. So that's this one and this one. Shift selecting again. Lock the pitch. Why is that grayed out? I don't know. Well, maybe I'll have to do them one at a time. I was expecting to be able to do them two at a time, but that's all right. Do them one at a time. Okay, and then this one. See, I'm locking the pitch first. Of course, <laughs> this is for you pro guys, not for your sweet guys. You're going, to say, I can't do that. Well, that's right. You can't do that. That's why pro costs three or four hundred dollars more than uh, sweet. Okay, and I've got to get this roof plane here, a little hip plane. Again, lock the pitch, change the value. Then the pitch stays and the value just changes. And it goes straight up. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to select this one and use the join roofs. You know, even though the values are the same, it's, it's a good practice to make sure that they're connected properly. And don't just assume they are. If you connect them, then they're connected. Same thing with this edge, or this root plane and that root plane. And this root plane edge and this root plane edge. So I hope that all the major changes that you intended to make to this model have been made, because you can see that Sweet's not going to cut it roof-wise. You're going to have to have at least Pro. Uh, I know this is cheap Premiere that I'm using, but the roof tools in Premiere and the roof tools in Pro are identical. There's no difference. There's no difference in the roof tool between, uh, I can see there's gutter turned on there. You turn off the stinking gutter. It's not very useful in this case. You'll see the, gut, the incipient gutter there disappear. And let me line that edge up a little bit more. Get over there. Okay, that looks clean. So this is just about done based on my best guesses. You understand that it's not accurate. It's just more like your more like your posted uh I mean, I'd have to do elevations, and let's take a look at that. I'm going to close this view here and go to the second floor. I don't know if, yeah, it looks like what I've done is uh, goobered things up a little bit. Yeah, see this line here? Well, that line is where the roof is cutting across the uh, ceiling. Yeah, see, it's called a, a, a coffer line. I don't think Sweet can do this either, but maybe it can. See, it's coffering there. So that tells me that this, this roof's too low, or the ceiling height's too low. Maybe the ceiling height in here is not 9 feet, but maybe it's 8 feet. If it's uh, 8 feet, let's just put the finished ceiling at uh, 96 inches. I don't know, I'm guessing. And, well, it's still got a little tiny coffer in here, so I would assume that these uh, roof planes are a little, still a little low relative to the second floor. So you get 96 inches, it's still coffering a little bit. See that coffer line, when I moved it down to 96, moved down here. Let's see if we set these to uh, 96. You'll see that coffer line jump up screen. See, now it's there, matches this one. And I really don't know, but I'm, I'm showing you some things that may help you uh, we we'll finish ceiling 96. If the second floor is 96, uh, then it's 96. Yeah, see there's that coffer line down here, and, th and then this one here, if I set it to 96, finish ceiling 96, you'll see it jump down. But this is the sort of thing that uh, 
since I don't know, I can't help you. If uh, these roofs are all too high or something, then uh, they're too high. I mean, too low. Uh, and they tie in, and in this case, this whole system ties in with the floor below. If I knew the, the correct data, then I could set this correctly. <coughs> Okay, well, I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm, it's all guesses at this point. Let's see about that. That must be the same camera that, yeah, okay. So I don't know. Uh, like I say, uh, I can't read the uh, data in the uh, elevations you posted. But in terms of what it looks like, it looks more like the elevations now. And that's the best I can do with the data that I had. And I, ho I hope it helps you. I'm sorry I couldn't do it all in suite, but if, you can't, if I can't do it all in suite, you can't do it all in suite. Or I, don't ha I didn't have the patience. Maybe if, if you would will be willing to stay at it and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak, you might be able to get suite to do this roof. But it, it's from my point of view, in, in terms of a, a reasonable period of time, it was beyond the, the capabilities of Suite to easily do. And, and you saw, I, I, once I switched to uh, Pro or tr Premiere, then it was it was quite straightforward and bang, bang, bang. I just noticed that's wrong. Okay, so I guess that's it for now. I'm sorry I couldn't do better in Suite and what you have, but I'll send this file back to you and... Uh, it's up to you now. <laughs> Thank you.